clapping our praise this morning. Oh, be seated on our praise as we usher in your presence. Oh, for you to come and do what you do, Lord. Do what you do. Come on, there's a sweet anointing and a presence here. Just tell the Lord, come do what you do now. Come do what you do now. Come do what you do now. As we usher in. As we usher in your presence in this. Come on, come do. Come and change the atmosphere, Lord. Come do what you do now. Are we here ready for you? Come do what you do now. As we worship you, Lord. As we usher in your presence. We invite you. Come do what you do now. And have it our praise. Come do what 
Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Come on, we are free. The Bible says who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yeah. worship you and glorify your name my life my life I give to you a sacrifice a sacrifice of praise your fire your fire burns within nothing nothing can make it stop Ooh, come on. ignite it like no other for all the world for all the world to see can see my weakness you are strong to you everything Lord a sacrifice of praise your fire your fire burns within nothing can make it nothing can make it stop oh yes Lord ignited like no other for all the world for all the world to see cause in my weakness you are strong with everything I give you praise all my life Lord and with my hands with my feet
tell your neighbor there's power. There is power in the name. Oh, we're lifting up his mighty name in his house. There's power in the name. There's power to say there is power. There is power in the name. So much power. There's power in the name. Oh, come on, can we agree this morning? Say, there is power in the name of Jesus. So much power.
Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's just cry out and we can just say, Lord, fill me with your oil. Can we just slow it down a little bit? Fill my life with Holy Spirit oil. Come on, begin to think of what you're saying. Begin to think and begin to invite the Holy Spirit into your heart right now. Let His oil flow. Fill my life with Holy Spirit. Fill my life with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come in this place right now and fill the desperate hearts. Touch those that are in need of you right now. Lord, come with your oil right now. The oil that will ignite our heart to burn for you. That we may be the lamp, God, that is on top. So that the world can see your light shine bright through us. That we will not be the lamp that's hidden on the bottom. That our lives, our church, God, that our home groups and everything that we do would be that lamp that will be set on top, Lord. That would give light to the world. And that will attract every person to you. To that every knee, that every tongue will confess that you are God. And every knee will bow to your name in Jesus Christ. Fill my life with Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill my life with Come on, church, cry out, cry out. So that I can testify to you. Be a witness of Jesus Christ. Fill my life with Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your fresh anointing, for your fresh oil that you're pouring out into our hearts today. We want to shine bright for you, Lord. We want to be a witness, witnesses, God, in our communities, in our families. We want people to know you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to be praying right now for this very thing. That the name of Jesus Christ will shine bright in our community, in our church, in our country and across the world. That people will come to know Jesus who is the light of their salvation. Amen church. We're going to be praying for the names that we wrote down of the loved ones and, and the people we're believing that will come to the salvation and to the knowledge of Jesus Christ but before we do that we're going to focus our eyes globally we're going to begin to pray out that vision that God has given our church is to see millions come to know Jesus globally and we play as a church a small part in it and the part that we're going to play right now is through our prayers by praying waging war uh, doing warfare and asking God to save millions all across the globe church your prayer and my prayer it matters it makes a difference when we pray God dispatches his angels God dispatches his angels to work out those prayers today we're gonna pray once again for the 1040 window 1040 window if we can put up the graphics that's that part of the world's region if we can just bring down the piano a little bit <clears throat> there's over 57 countries that, that includes in that 1040 window and two-thirds of world's population lives in that 1040 window and most of that population is unchurched most of that population uh, don't know Christ and as you see highlighted religions dominating that re uh, that region which is Islam, Hindu, Buddh Buddhism that pretty much consists of the majority of the religion and very small part of it is um, very small part of it is Christians and so today we're gonna pray that God will bring salvation to that region that God will send 
stir the hearts of people the missionaries will go there that God will dispatch his angels to you work in that region that region belongs to Jesus the earth belongs to Jesus and Bible says that the earth eventually will come into full dominion of Jesus Christ but we as a bride of Christ we partner together through our prayers to make that happen until the day that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and every knee will bow before his name today we're praying specifically for the country of Cambodia that consists of about 15 million people 97 percent of that country is Buddhism about two percent of that is Islam and only less than one percent is Christians and we're gonna pray for that country today we're gonna believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ will reach into Cambodia Cambodia is open for missionaries and it, it's open for Christians uh, but unfortunately there's not many of them there this uh, it's strongly rooted in Buddhism and today we're gonna pray for Cambodia to be saved Cambodia is struggling with uh, with high corruption a lot of sex trafficking children and and women a lot of human rights violation um, just a lot of injustice that's going on in that country and today we want to pray for Cambodia we want to see the gospel of Jesus Christ reach Cambodia that the, that, that uh, the population of Cambodia will not reflect less than 1% of Christians but it will be a majority of Christians in Jesus name church can we believe for that and can we pray for that we're gonna believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ will reach Cambodia so right now as a sign of agreement I want you to lift your hands and stretch towards the uh, stretch towards this map of Cambodia that's on the screen those of you that are watching us online if you for Cambodia let us know we're praying for you but right now let's begin to pray for Cambodia let's begin to cry out let's begin to believe God that the gospel of Jesus Christ will come to Cambodia and people will be saved and the nation will be redeemed in Jesus Christ in Jesus mighty name Father God we come before you God we lift up to you God in Cambodia God we lift up to you the people of Cambodia God we lift up to you God that nation that the gospel will begin to reach it right now God we go into the heavenly realms God we go into the spiritual realms God and we break and we rip and we tear down every veil of false religion we break down every veil of false gods we break down every idol of Islam every idol of Hinduism God every single other religion God that is not God with you God we break it down right now in the name of Jesus Christ God we ask you that the doors of the gospel God will be flung open God that your spirit will go down into Cambodia God and break every spiritual God force that is coming against it in the name of Jesus Christ God we pray God we ask you to begin to save Cambodia God save that nation God save those people God God bring the hearts turn the hearts of the people towards you turn the hearts of the children God turn the hearts of the family God turn the hearts of the government God turn the hearts of the officials God turn the hearts of the mayors towards you God that the Cambodia will serve you in the name of in Jesus. Jesus name right now let's begin to pray that the revival will hit the churches in Cambodia there are churches in Cambodia Christian churches but they're small right now let's begin to pray that God will ignite revival in those churches also let's pray that Christian the Christian missionaries will go into Cambodia and let's pray that the church will experience great revival in Cambodia with signs and wonders and miracles that will attract the, the non-believers to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let's begin to pray and cry out for revival in Cambodia among the churches and Christians. Yes Lord we come before you God and we ask you Father that you open up the heavens above that place Father and you outpour a fire God. We ask you that you outpour a fresh anointing, a fresh wine over that place Father for every believer God, for every person that is seeking you Father. I pray right now that you begin to equip missionaries evangelists, pastors God that will go out boldly and unashamedly to preach your word God. That will go out and preach your love your compassion your salvation father I pray right now that you just bring an outburst God a revival a fresh fire within that place father that you lift up Cambodia father and you begin to lift up churches father let the raw power of the Holy Spirit manifest in that place father that we'll see an increase of healing of delivering anointing over that place father that you begin to equip the pastors and evangelists there that they may lift up churches father to glorify and honor your name father we pray in your name father we thank you that you're answering our prayers 
we thank you God that your angels are being dispatched right now Lord to wage war on behalf of your people Lord and to bring revival into that region father I pray Lord that the people there their Buddhists and Muslims God that they will encounter you in their dreams and visions to different situations and circumstances they will come to the knowledge of you the true and only God in Jesus name we pray amen church we're gonna see revival in Cambodia in our lifetime in the mighty name of Jesus right now we're gonna bring it more local and closer to home we're gonna begin to pray for the names of the loved ones and then if we can have guys come out here these if you don't know what these are these are the names of the people that people are believing family and friends family and friends just a few two, right there family and friends have wrote them down and believing for the salvation of their souls these are the people that are my might be addicted to certain substances these are people that are lost these are people that are in pain these are people that are going through divorce and, and breakups these are people that are facing hardships in their family most importantly these are the people that are that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and that's the greatest loss and right now we want to come together with these people and we want to stand in the gap with them we want to let them know that they're not alone in their pain we want to let them know that they're not alone in their darkness that not they're not alone in their addiction and we want to stand in the gap with them and pray for God to bring salvation to these people church would you agree with us would you agree with these people and let's pray if you have a loved one that doesn't know Jesus Christ and you're here physically you can come and write it down on this placard those of you that are watching us online you can submit that through a, through uh, the information that will be displayed on a lower of your screen we will write those names here and we're gonna be praying for them Monday through Friday every prayer every Friday prayer Wednesday prayer every Sunday prayer every Wednesday prayer we're praying for it every Monday through Friday in the mornings we're praying for these names and the church globally is praying right now church let's stretch your hands toward these placards let's stretch our hands toward these names let's begin to intercede let's begin to call them out by name let's begin to cry out and stand in a gap for these people in Jesus name let's pray Father God we come before you God we lift up to you God every name on this board God we lift up to you our family God our friends God our co-workers we lift up to you every single work person that is connected to us God we are praying that you begin to bring salvation to them God God we are praying God that you begin to save every Every single person God save our family save our friends God God we plead the blood of Jesus over their lives God God we plead God salvation God to begin to come to our homes God salvation to begin to come to our schools salvation come to our families come to our friends in the name of Jesus Christ God we pray for our co-workers God that the salvation will begin to come to them God God we pray for Travis God for Jacob God for Hannah God, we pray for Ramsey, God. God, we pray, God, for every single God, for Saul, God. We pray for Kevin, Lord Jesus. God, begin to save him in the name of Jesus Christ, God. Turn the hearts of our families, God. Turn the hearts of those, God, our loved ones, those that we are connected to, God. And most importantly, let us be the light to them, God. Let us be, God, Jesus to them, God, in our schools, God, in our families, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that we may see our families saved, God, that we may see our schools saved, God, that before our eyes we will see those that we are praying for come to know Jesus. Yes, Lord, we come right now, Father, and we unbind them from every spirit, God, every spirit of false religion, God, every single spirit that's binding them down, we unbind them in the name of Jesus, Father. We remove every vow, every bondage, every yoke. We break it right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We come against every spiritual attack upon their life, Father, and we break it right now in the name of Jesus, Father, and we pray, God, that you will begin to encounter them, Father, that you begin to set them free, Father, that they will, re they will reveal yourself to them in a greater measure, Father. We pray right now for every single member of the family, God, and we pray that we will see the family tree come to you, Father. We pray for every daughter, for every son, and for every mother, Father, that you begin to encounter them in a greater measure, Father. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in the mighty Jesus name of name. Jesus Christ church I want to pray specifically this last prayer against addictions those people that are here that their names are written that are struggling with addiction 
we know how much it not only destroys the life of a person but an entire family addiction is, is a very serious thing and oftentimes those people that are addicted they can't even help themselves they need a spiritual intervention especially those that are hooked on cocaine and meth we know statistically the recovery rate is below five percent they can't do it on their own because it's a spiritual issue right now let's stretch our hands towards them there is many names that i know that people have written down here that under the bondage of addiction right now let's begin to pray maybe you know somebody in your family that's struggling with drug addiction alcohol addiction right now let's begin to pray let's begin to cry make this your own pain there are parents that wrote their children down that's their last hope right now let's connect with their faith let's connect with them in spirit and let's pray that the spirit of addiction will be broken over their family and over their children in Jesus name come on begin to cry out like you're crying out for your own son and your own daughter father in Jesus name I pray for every person God that is written here every name God every child every daughter every mother every father every uncle God every aunt that is under the spirit of bondage under the spirit of addiction right now we cry out Lord we pray we intercede Lord we break every spirit of bondage over their life we break every spirit of addiction over their life in Jesus name we pray for every son and every, every daughter that's addicted to drugs right now addicted to alcohol addicted to pain pills right now in Jesus name you spirit of addiction be gone out of their life be broken out of their life be broken out of their life in Jesus name every addiction to drugs right now we break your chain we break your chain we break your grip over the life right now we declare every son and daughter free we declare him saved in Jesus name we pray for every parent that's addicted to pain pills and alcohol we pray for every aunt and uncle right now in Jesus name be free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father let your angels locate them right now find them God wherever they are at in their pit and rescue them set them free in Jesus name father we cover every name every person here on this list with the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost father as a church we mark them for salvation Lord we mark them for salvation Lord don't give them rest until they find you don't give them peace until they give up their life to live for you in Jesus name we pray in the church of God said amen let's put our hands together for Jesus greet your neighbor on your left and your right as we focus our eyes on the screen Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine, and I'm so excited to be ministering at Hungry Gen's Night of Fire on September 29th. I can't wait for what God's going to do. It's going to be a powerful time in His presence where our miracles will break out. There will be so much healing and deliverance and encounters with Jesus. I can't wait for what God's going to do, and I can't wait to see you there. You can follow Hungry Gen on Instagram and Facebook for more information. I'll see you then. Three. Which is the woo, 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 woo. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Okay. Three, two. Happy Sunday, everyone. We're excited to have you. These are your announcements. Woo, 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 woo. If it's your first time visiting us at Hungry Gen, we want to get connected with you. Take the card at the back of your pew and meet us in the lobby. And if it's your first time watching online, go to hungrygen.com slash VIP and we'll see you there. Hold up, wait a minute, we have a service change. Yes, first service is starting at 8.30 a.m. and second service at 11.30 a.m. We wanna see you there, bring your wives, bring your kids. And your cat. Yeah, we love animals too, but don't actually bring them. I'm allergic. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Live groups will be started again September 19th. Both virtual and in person, we'll be diving into deliverance in life groups. For more information, go to hungrygen.com slash groups. How to show <laughs> To learn more about Hungry Gen and to get plugged into serving, join us for Life Class, which is the first Sunday of every single month. And every virtual online class is the first Wednesday of every month. So be sure to find out more information by going to hungrygen.com slash life class. We have some exciting news. Starting in October, we are going to have three services. Our service times are going to be at 8.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m., and 2.30 p.m. See you there. That's it for announcements. 
please help us welcome the next person on stage. Woo! Come on, Hunger Generation, let's make some noise in this place. I want to say good morning to each of you here today. Good morning to our live stream viewers. I just want to briefly talk about, about offering today. You know, the Word of God says that, when, that He rewards those who diligently seek Him. Our God is a rewarder, amen? Our God is also a provider. And so we believe that giving God a tithe is not just a choice that we make. It's something that rightfully belongs to God, amen? And so I, I want us to uh, go into a time where where we, we no longer view offering as, as this, as this uh, thing that maybe I should do. It's something that we should always be thinking about first thing when we get a paycheck, amen? It's always about giving our first to God, not our last to God. You know, Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom of God. And so I believe that with, when it comes with seeking, it also speaks of giving our all to God. We bring ourselves to worship. We bring ourselves here to church, you know, the first day of the week. Why not bring our finances to him as well? Amen. And here there's four ways to give. There's an the envelope in the pew in front of you or behind you. You can text any amount to 84321. You can go to hungrygen.com slash give. And you can also go to the church center app, which is my personal favorite way. Keeps track of all your giving on there. And right now I just want to, I want to pray for our tithes and our offerings, the seeds that we're going to be sowing today. And there's also donation boxes in the lobby. So after service, there's going to be places where you can place your offerings there. Amen. So right now, God, we lift up our seats to you today, Lord. And God, I just ask that you just have your way with these, with these seeds, Lord God. Lord, your word says you give seed to the sower, Lord God. So as we give to you, Lord God, we know in your word that you will take care of us in return, Lord God. And God, we don't give expecting anything back. We just want to sow into your kingdom. We just want to advance you, Lord God. We want to pour into your soil, Lord God. And we just want to see your kingdom come and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. God, I pray for everyone's jobs. I pray for everyone's businesses, Lord God. I pray for every single person person who is sowing today, Lord God, or maybe even those who are not able to right now, I pray, Lord God, that you provide for them at, at this very moment, Lord God. I just decree and I declare raises, promotions, checks in the mail, Lord God. You are the Jehovah Jireh. You are the God, the, our provider, and the God that is more than enough. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, like I said, church, there's there's going to be donation boxes in the in the lobby, and please help me welcome Lana for testimonies. <laughs> Good morning, church. How are you doing? Good. 8:30 a.m. Come on, we are here. Give yourself a round of applause. Come on, let's just. We welcome everyone who's watching us live right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today is a special service. And, you know, every Sunday is a special Sunday. Amen. Because when we gather together, the Lord is in the midst of us. Amen. And we love the Lord, but He loves us more. And the proof of, of His love is always when we see what he's doing in our lives. And right now, I'm just going to share a few testimonies with you to, to encourage your faith. First of all, I'm going to read a couple of testimonies that came in through online. And give me one second. First one is, I was suffering from shoulder pain for the last three months after a slip in the bathroom. And I felt sharp pain in my shoulder ever since that day. Uh, and since that day, I have been getting very uh, severe pain. In fact, just this morning, I applied some ointment and there was no relief. It was the first time today that I tuned in to Hungry Gen live stream on YouTube. And when the man of God was speaking about the Holy Spirit and ministering to receive the Holy Spirit, I felt a tingling sensation in my body. And at that moment, my shoulder was completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. One more. This one from a Thursday stream with Pastor Vlad on Rewatch. Delivered from multiple demons, I have been tormented uh, by, I was always exhausted, tired, and the devil is a liar. And um, the addictions and sicknesses, generational curses, and all of that stuff, and the person received deliverance. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. And the last one. 
I got closer to the Holy Spirit and received the gift of speaking in tongues when I was um, joining in uh, life uh, uh, online church on Wednesdays that we do. Amen. Come on. We are just so happy to see God's work in people's lives. Amen. And we are believing for more. We are believing for miracles, for healings. And we know that the distance is never a barrier for the Holy Spirit to touch you. And if you're watching us right now, I want you to just receive that word. God is alive and he wants to touch your body today in Jesus name. And right now we're just going to watch a, a video from our guys in Brazil. Come on. We are all so excited. Yeah. We're going to uh, watch a recap. They're coming back soon. And would you please fix your eyes on the screen? Hey, guys. This is Rick all the way from Brazil. We have had an incredible week. We have gone to different river uh, communities here in the Amazon or the tributaries of the Amazon River in Brazil. And it's been life-changing. We have seen salvations, hundreds of salvations. We've seen healings, deliverances. People even were filled with the Holy Spirit yesterday in the service that we had deep within the jungles of Brazil. It's been the most life-transforming experience for me. Make sure that you don't miss the next mission trip that we will have. Make sure you take the leap of faith. <laughs> Come on, let's give a hand of applause to our team in Brazil. They're probably watching. We miss you guys. We can't wait to hear what God has done. When you come back, you're going to share all about it. And we are just so, so proud of you guys. And we are there in the spirit with you. <laughs> Amen. And so right now, I would like to share my last testimony. It's going to be a live testimony. Would you please help me welcome Anna up to the stage as she comes up? Give her a round of applause. Come on. Woo. <laughs> We just want to remind you guys, if you have a testimony, it's always important to share for the glory of God. Okay, if you're watching us live, you can go to hungrygen.com slash testimony and share your testimony. And if you are here, we are expecting you to share what God is doing in your life. Amen. Just come up to one of our leaders and we're going to get you set up. Amen. Anna, thank you so much uh, for, uh, willing, for your willing heart to share what God has done, your salvation story. It's incredible. And let's just share it with people. Would you please start with, uh, with sharing um, where you're from and your life story? Okay. Um, so my name is Hannah. Uh, I am originally from Michigan. I moved to um, Washington in 2019. Uh, so now I live in Kennewick with my husband. Come on. <laughs> Awesome. Anna, could you please share with us, how, how were you growing up and what are the things that uh, you were struggling in life and how, where did the life and the devil took you? Uh, so I grew up in rural Michigan, uh, hunting, fishing, all of that stuff. Loved it. Um, uh, I didn't grow up in like a religious household or anything like that. I have great parents. I love them and my mom's watching. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> um, so uh, I didn't really have much experience in church other than going to like um, youth group, but really wasn't going for Jesus. I was just going for friends. <laughs> uh, what was the rest of the question? <laughs> just share with us, what are the things that you went through in life and how did you found Jesus? Um, oof, okay, so I was... As of, when I was younger, I had some like kind of weird like spiritual out of body experiences, and I had I was really young when this had happened, and I had uh, talked to somebody about it, and they had told me that no, that that doesn't exist, that's not real, that's you know, so it completely shut me down, and I didn't talk to anyone about it. Um, as I grew older, I started like kind of wondering like there's got to be more to life, like there's just it's there has to be more, there's something deeper to life. I feel something deeper, and so. I started searching, um, and that kind of led me into uh, becoming a psychic medium, and I was starting my own business. Um, I was doing readings for people, uh, doing a lot of crazy things, and um, yeah, and then so that's kind of where I got into my early 20s, and uh, I was starting that business, and that's, is that Yeah, 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 no, that's good. And so with you, 
going on this search for supernatural, you didn't know that that stuff wasn't from God and it was, you know, from the devil. And you got deeper and deeper into that to the point where you opened your business to, you know, uh, doing a psychic business and things like that. Uh, how all those things led you to your salvation? And when was the moment when you stopped doing that? And what happened? How did you meet Jesus Christ? So um, I kind of back up a little bit. I don't like going to bars. I don't like drinking any of that stuff, even before I was a Christian. And there was one day where I was just driving on the road, and this is while I was the psychic medium, and I was doing lots of drugs as well. That also helped open my mind. Uh, <laughs> and I was driving on the road, and I was passing a bar and a little town, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to stop and have a drink. And that's, like, not me at all. I just, not me. But I stopped there, and I met this guy named Steve, and he had tickets to this big giant festival that was going to happen and I went with him to this festival and I ended up meeting a guy there named Brett and Brett uh, was a Christian and he was going to these festivals and talking to people about Jesus although he was well that's a different part but anyways so uh, so I was at this festival and we somehow met Brett in a huge uh, 40,000 hippies at this festival. I don't know how we ran into him. I mean, obviously it was God. Like, there's no other way. For me to even stop at the bar, talk to this guy, get a ticket to go there, all of that was like God was had his hand in that. And uh, so we met Brett, and then we started talking, and he, Brett had this really long totem pole with flags on it, and the flags, one was a Christian flag and one was a Jewish flag, and I was like, oh, I really like your flags. I had no idea what they meant. Uh, and so he asked me, like, what I do, and I told him, oh, I work at a, a local dairy making ice cream and all that stuff, but then he kept asking me, and so I said, okay, on the side, I have a side business, I'm starting, I'm a psychic medium, and he just looked at me, he was like, oh, your life's about to change, and I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so uh, he started talking to me about um, just the Bible and, and Jesus and God, and at first, like, before he even really said anything, like, I got the feeling that he was, like, you know, Bible thumper, so I was like, ugh. Like, why, why, why? I don't want any of that stuff. Like, I know what I'm doing. I know, you know, I, I've got it. I know the power. I've got it, okay? That's that's what my mind was thinking. And so he just started talking to me, and God bless him. He stayed up, like, we stayed up, like, all night, and he was answering all my questions about, like, you know, obviously all the questions that we have, right? Like, where am I, why am I here? Where did I come from? Where do I go when I'm no longer here? Like, all of those questions I kept asking, and, and hours of talking, and he'd answer the questions, and eventually we got to the end, and my mind was just blown, and I was like, holy crap, there's this, there's this whole new world, like, <laughs> what I've been searching for, <laughs> and I mean, it, yeah, it helped that I, we were all, never mind, I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> come on, let's give a round of applause to Jesus. You know, the funny thing, even in a dark spot right there at that festival, there was a guy, you know, it, nothing is random. And he evangelized to her to bring her out of that darkness. God used him mightily. And so after that night, he kind of uh, answered your questions and things like that. Where was, when was that uh, breaking moment for you to receive actually Jesus Christ? How did that happen? Oh, man. Okay, so the, that day... You know, that all that night, woke up the next day, and he was still answering my questions, and then I had to go. I had to go to a birthday party for my cousin, and so I went home, and as I was driving home, I remember this thought, and it was the devil. I knew it was, but this thought came into mind. It was like, what are you doing? It's just like when he was like, did God really say to Eve, you know? So, and I was like, you know what? No, I'm not I'm not going to listen to that. Like, you know, what am I doing? I'm, I, I th There's something here, and so... Brett had told me, like, hey, come back the next night. We'll sneak you into the festival and, and all that. I was like, all right, cool. Sounds good. <laughs> so I, I left at, you know, birthday party, went to the, back to the festival because it was only minutes. It was in the same area, and it's a massive festival. But we got in. He snuck me in. And uh, that night we started going to all the different stages and, like, raging and having a good time and doing things we shouldn't be doing. But you know, that's besides the point. So we were all feeling good, having a great time, and it was like the final uh, stage of the night, and it was uh, Saturday night moving into Sunday morning, and it was like 12 in the morning, and and he had that long totem with the Jewish and Israeli flag. He gave it to me, and I was just like waving it, like having a great time, and uh, he came up behind me, and he was like, so do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And I was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and so he said the prayer, and I said the prayer with him, and 
and then he uh, he ended up like speaking tongues in my ear, and I was like, what the heck was that? And and then uh, you know, I, I obviously later on I got plugged into an evangelical church, but it was crazy. Come on, let's give a hand of applause to Jesus. That is a very interesting story. Okay, unusual salvation story. And so after you got plugged into the evangelical stuff, how did you drop all that psychic medium business and uh, being, you know, guided with all those spirit guys and things like that? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I had all these, like, spirit guides that were portraying themselves as, like, angels, and I could see them in my mind's eye. And uh, the longer I was in the psychic medium world, the more that came. It started out with just one, and then there were more and more, and they would all have names, and they, it was crazy, but they were getting to the point where they were actually making physical things happen. Like, I was driving on the road one day, and one of them, I heard say, like, uh, you know, oh, you don't believe I'm real here? I'm going to show you I'm real, and I saw in my mind's eye lean forward go, to go and knock on the glass, and I heard knock, knock on both the front windshield and the side window, and I was like, whoa, that was like physical, spiritual meeting, and it was just it was crazy. So um, the thing that made me realize what I was doing was wrong is there's a Bible verse that says that the devil parades as an angel of light. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I read that, I realized it was like uh, scales fell off my eyes that there were times where I would see these like angels or spirit guides that were around me. And God would like reveal to me that their white pearlescent wings that I would see would just all of a sudden be like this flash of like smoldering, decaying black wing. And I was like questioning that, but I wasn't a Christian at the time. So I just let it go. And I was just like, okay, that that's weird. But then after I became a Christian, I read that and it was just like, God made it he connected the two. He was like, you see that the devil parades as an angel of light. He was showing himself to you as good, as white, as light, as pretty. But underneath, I was showing you what was really there. And so it was just, it was crazy. And I dropped all that. I was like, okay, yes, there's a spirit world. Obviously, I know that. But it, it, there is a good, there is a bad, there is a light, there is evil. And the devil parades as an angel of light. He makes himself look good, you know, through so many things. Come on, we are so happy that you decided to drop that stuff to follow Jesus Christ. And I know that when you moved to Tri-Cities, uh, what, actually, could you please share a little bit, how did you move to Tri-Cities? How did you end up at Hungry Gen and deliverance that took place in your life? Should I tell about, like, from Tennessee to Michigan, then to Washington, or... Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. I don't want to go too long. So, um, okay. So uh, Brett and I started uh, dating and I moved down to Tennessee where he was living. He was from Michigan, but uh, I moved down there to his office and I started working as a nutrition practitioner there. And um, I was there for a year and a half. A lot of stuff happened and I needed to leave because things just fell apart. So I came back to Michigan and the same exact time that everything fell apart and I came back to Michigan, my dad, who was, had been in Montana, uh, was coming back to Michigan as well. And he was going to go back out west to work at a job that was close to Connell. His next job was close to Connell. And him and my grandma were both like, kid, why don't you just go out to out west with him? You know, experience him. You don't have any ties. You don't have anything holding you down. You've had a lot of crazy things in your past. They didn't say that, but, you know. <laughs> uh, and so I was like, you know what? All right, I'm, I'm going to do that. So I went out west with him and uh, lived with my dad in Connell for a year. And in that time, I... Uh, got a job. I started going to school here at Gather for Him Christian College, and then um, I got a job doing the nutrition work again, and so I just started get really getting rooted in here, and I really liked what was going on, and uh, so I started looking for a church. I started at uh, the garden. I checked out a few different ones, and then I ended up here, and I really liked it when I came here, um, and so then I... Uh, met my husband <laughs> and he found out that he was also going here so it just it stuck <laughs> and they actually recently just got married come on let's just congratulations you guys and I know that the, would you share really quickly uh, lastly what are the things that you still kind of struggled with emotionally and that took you to the deliverance and what happened after deliverance 
Yeah, so I was having like a lot of like night terrors, like any time it was lights up. I was afraid of the dark, basically. So a 24, 25-year-old that's afraid of the dark, but that's what the devil can do. So, uh, And I was having a lot of anxiety, and I was still having some physical health issues because I treated my body really poorly for like four years with a lot of drugs and all that stuff. And so my body was still healing from a lot of stuff, but there was also part of it that was spiritual that, you know, I'd opened myself up to a lot of things spiritually and that opened doors that needed to be closed. So um, I had gotten hold of Casey, who is really good friends with my husband, and uh, we talked about doing a deliverance and we did. And I have been constantly getting better since. Come on, come on. Let's put our hands together. Come on. So lastly, what is your advice to people who might be um, dumbling into some uh, occultic stuff, new age practices, uh, different kinds of religions, something that it, of the dark and that we know that, what would you suggest them if they are even curious about that stuff? Not all religions are the same. They are not all preaching one message. That was a big lie that I believed that they were all preaching the same message and they are not. They are very, very different. and. Jesus is the one and only true way. He is. There's no other way around it. And if you are thinking about or if you have somebody talking to you about or you are questioning things, like going to search for it on your own spiritually will lead you down dark paths where you are going to open doors that you don't want to open and you're going to have to heal from later. So stop. Wait a minute. Open the Bible. Talk to somebody you know that's a leader. Talk to somebody you know, you know, and obviously... Just talk to somebody in the church. Talk to somebody who's been through it. You know, I've been through it, you know, and it's, you will get, as, as I said earlier, devil is a liar and he can parade as an angel of light in many ways. And it's not just spiritual too. He can parade as an angel of light in, an, you know, another person in your mind and the thought. So you, you got to be really careful. And the only way you're going to be able to be careful is by reading that word, keeping your heart open to the Holy Spirit and being led by him. Come on, that was so good. Preach it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. I really appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Wow, were you guys blessed? Come on. Our God is such a good God. He can literally connect the dots and pull you out. What she forgot to mention is that her grandma, she believes that, you know, she was praying. She was the only, she was a Mennonite woman, right? And she was praying. She was the only one who kind of followed Christ in their family tree. And she believes that by the prayers of her grandma, she was standing here today. Come on, let's give one more time a round of applause to Jesus. And let's welcome Pastor Vlad to the stage. Come on, God is good. Come on, somebody. God is good. It is good to be in the church today. Amen. Amen. We welcome every person today to this wonderful service. Today is a special day. Today is the last Sunday where we have two services. Next Sunday we're moving up to three services. Now some of you may say, but you know this sanctuary is right now not fully full. Why start three? Well, we have a prayer line happening today. So a lot of our team, in fact, is screening people. A lot of our, most of our students are going through the prayer line as well. And so on our second services, every single Sunday, it's not only packed, it's overpacked. And while we already have a new building that is going through the remodeling and it's going through that, but it's going to take some time. We don't want to wait for the new building and turn people away who want to come to service every single weekend. And so we're going to make a little sacrifice. We ask you, to, for those of you who consider this church your home, to, you know, to begin to uh, sign up to serve and also give so that we can move that project faster. And then very soon, soon and very soon, we will go back to one service. One glorious, big, awesome, powerful, and Edison in Kenwick, Washington. Are you excited for that? Everyone watching us on YouTube, we love you. God has a plan for your life. Spam the chat, click thumbs up on Facebook, share it on everybody's timeline until they block you from sharing. And so evangelism is free online. Amen. Amen. And we see so many people watching us on YouTube and so many people that are tuning in. In fact, a lot of people that come to our church, they come and they, their testimony is this. Hey, I watch you guys. I've been following. I'm glad to be here. And they're usually very surprised that the church building looks smaller <laughs> than it looks online. But um, without, uh, with that said, we have our morning prayers every Monday through Friday. But Wednesday is our hour of power. We stream that prayer 
from 6 to 7 p.m. and we would really love for each one of you to be a part of it. This week is going to be also special. Catherine Kirk is going to be with us on Wednesday. I can tell you right away to please be coming at least 30 minutes early because um, a lot of people are flying in, driving in. And just if our church comes in, we won't be able to fit into two flows. And so uh, for the rest of you, I just encourage you to stay home, watch it online. And so, but if you want to be here, you want to be here way, way, way earlier um, for that service. Being a deliverance service um, and we're preparing for the second service, I want to share with you a message that I will call it, keep Lord in God. Keep Lord in God. Genesis chapter 3, the famous temptation story, the first temptation story, the first of many things happened in Genesis 3. The first sin, the first um, mention of curse, the first um, man blaming his wife, not the last one though, but it's the first one. Uh, wife blaming the devil, also not the last one. And not only wife, but other people blaming the devil. So a lot of first things. We see the first mention of the serpent coming into the picture. A lot of the first things. And I want to read just one verse. The first verse of chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, whom the Lord God, somebody say Lord God. Lord God. Somebody say the Lord God whom the Lord God had made and he said to the woman has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden so we know in the first two chapters of the book of the Bible we see that God makes the the earth he then makes it really beautiful he makes humans in it and then he puts them in the garden called the garden of Eden now for us the Garden of Eden we know that it's somewhere where the Turkey is somewhere in that area but the Garden of Eden was more than just a nice garden where God had beautiful plants beautiful trees and beautiful fruits the Garden of Eden tells us in other scriptures it lets us know when you read between the lines that the Garden of Eden was not just the dwelling place of Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden was God's office his spiritual dwelling place as well in fact it was so common in the garden of eden for god to walk through the garden the bible says that when serpents showed up and most of us when we think of a serpent we think of a hissing snake this wasn't a hissing snake in fact we see in in ezekiel chapter 18 it refers to the devil in the garden and look what it says about him you were in eden the garden of god every precious stone was your covering you were the anointed cherubim who covers i established you you were on the holy mountain of god still talking about the eden you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stone so i want you to switch your mind of how you think about the garden of eden this is not a satan the snake this is a cherubim coming to, go, to to Adam and Eve this is somebody who has stones on him this is a spiritual being that appears in the garden and Eve is not freaked out like for example if I see a snake or some kind of a being I'll freak out we see people in the, in the New Testament you know the angel showed up in the temple and and Ezekiel and Zechariah and others were like scared whoa whoa she wasn't scared that tells us it was common for Adam and Eve to interact with spiritual beings. They were making appearances regularly. The world of God and the world of men was together. God had his home office, his entourage in the garden. He had a spiritual family and God made a physical family. How do we know that God had a spiritual family? Because we see these references. Let us make men. Now a lot of times people refer to the saying that that's God speaking to the three persons of the Trinity. But three persons of the Trinity are God. They don't need to know anything that they don't know. They're omniscient. They know everything. God does not need to ask the Son. The Son does not need to ask the Spirit. They know everything. So this is not referring to many scholars believe to the Trinity. This is referring to God's what they call God's console or God's spiritual family that God was around where God is asking them, let us make man in our image and likeness. Then we see more where Adam sinned. God says, let us 
they now know what we know and let's kick them out of garden and then God puts one of his spiritual beings as a security guard a watchman in the garden and a sword around the garden when Adam and Eve you know they passed away their descendants had the flood etc and they build a tower then God says let us come down and see what they build you must say who are these us we see more verses in the scripture in 1st Kings 22 verse 19 it says I saw the Lord sitting on his throne this is way later and all the host of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left hand God's world is so unique our minds cannot comprehend in book of Revelation we see living creatures we see elders we see thrones not just the throne we see different thrones so God has an entourage God has an office God has a staff God has his spiritual family and we see in book of Genesis when God makes the earth he creates the garden and these two worlds were very close to each other most likely they bridge together God's spiritual family and God's earthly family made of Adam and Eve it was common for Adam and Eve to interact with spiritual beings therefore when one of them came and started to talk to Eve Eve did not freak out Eve did not run Eve did not panic and Eve did not scream the world that God created both of the worlds were together God's assignment for Adam and Eve was to take this beautiful union between humanity and eternal God all around the globe to spread the Garden of Eden to make babies so that there is more children and that they could rule and reign on this earth along under with their Creator God of course we know what happened chapter 3 happened this being the spiritual being came to Adam and Eve and some people say well a lot of people who are studying the Bible for living Hebrew Greek and all of that stuff they're saying this is when the devil rebelled he had a problem with God having other children other family he had a problem that God entrusted them with rulership on earth and he was jealous he wanted to be the only one and he went and undermined God's authority and talking to Eve he started to I want you to see the beginning of the temptation and that's what this whole message is going to be about in chapter 2 of Genesis you will see this phrase if you read very carefully I want you to pay attention it says this the Lord God the Lord God the Lord God the Lord God it mentions the Lord God Genesis 2 4 Genesis 2 5 Genesis 2 7 Genesis 2 8 Genesis 2 9 Genesis 2 15 Genesis 2 16 Genesis 2 18 Genesis 2 19 Genesis 2 21 Genesis 2 22 and Genesis 3 1 it's exactly what we read the Lord God the Lord God see God was not just the maker he was also Lord meaning everything on the earth was his possession he was the owner and everything was submitted under his rulership I want you to notice how the devil starts the question has God said he takes the Lord out and how does Eve respond back she says yes God said she takes the Lord out as well before Eve fell with eating the fruit she stepped out from under the Lordship of her God keep the Lord in God meaning Satan does not come to make Eve an atheist Satan doesn't mind that you have a religion or you believe in God in fact if you don't believe in God you believe in something and you have a religion atheism is atheism is a religion I know they're saying it's a science it's not a science it's religion you have to believe in something you can't prove it's still a religion so Satan does not mind if you have a religion he did not come to Eve and question the existence of God the Creator he came and his first beginning of his whole thing is this there is a God he's not my Lord he shouldn't be your Lord either 
It's when Satan can get the Lord out of God, he got you on the hook. After that, it's just a matter of time. It depends on what really you will take a bite of. Some of us it's drugs, some of us it's alcohol, some of us it's immorality, some of us it's honestly success, it's pride. Different bait for a different person. But the first thing where he knocks the wind out of us is this, has God said? Has God said? God wants to be your Lord. He is Lord of heaven and the earth. And our life ought to be submitted to Him as Lord, not just as God. Come on, come on. Can somebody say, Amen, Lord? Yes, Lord. If you remember the story of the Last Supper when Jesus is saying, Somebody is going to betray me. And disciples in Matthew 26 22 say this one after another said, Is it I, Lord? I want you to notice disciples relationship with Jesus. Lord is it I? I want you to notice the reference. See we're using word Lord. We don't have Lords and somebody who claims to be Lord should, should see a doctor. It's not good because word Lord means you own. Word Lord means honestly absolute submission to that Lord. So if somebody walks around I know the Bible says that Sarah called Abraham Lord um, I don't know what she meant by that but like that, that's, that's a pretty huge word okay so if you call your husband Lord you just means you his like property okay not really good for your marriage but hey it makes him probably feel good <laughs> when your boss calls you you know he calls himself Lord that means he owns you that that that's prohibited in America that's illegal that's slavery so when a human being calls himself Lord we, we get this special Americans who got our independence from Great Britain like we're like heck no no I'm gonna fight I got guns I got like first amendment rights second amendments I got amendments I got constitution so we don't like anybody ruling over us because the last thing we need is a tyrant and so when we think of God we think is God is a buddy I can go to Wendy's with Jesus and I we're chill we're homies we got this really amazing relationship but I want to destroy that today because Jesus became too familiar to a lot of us. Jesus is not your buddy. He is God and He is Lord and disciples is not saying hey is it I buddy? They're saying is it I Lord? So though they've been with Him for three years they did not become so familiar where He lost the Lordship. Now did they make mistakes? Oh you bet. Did they betray him? Did they forsook him? Yeah they made a lot of mistakes but I want you to notice between them and Judas because then Jesus looks at Judas and this is what Judas replies to Jesus. So disciples said is it I Lord and Judas says Judas who would betray him answered is it I Rabbi? You're not my Lord. Never been, never will be but you are my teacher therefore I can sell you out but see when he's your Lord you can fall and trip you're still gonna be under his covering you're still gonna repent you're gonna still come back see it's that relationship it's why Jesus had the audacity to call Judas the devil <laughs> why is he the devil because the devil was the first person who said God without Lord the devil's number one task is to make you religious and remove your relationship to the Lordship of God and if maybe just tweak it miss it I know we live in a democracy I know we don't have Lords we got a president he's in in four years we can't wait for him to finish his course and get out another guy will come in we we like him for six months we don't like him after that for three and a half years presidents they make promises they don't keep politicians are like diapers you gotta switch them constantly for the same reason because they're you give them too much power they don't know what to do with it they mess up they're humans and that's normal god forbid if we will make our president previous one or this one lord we would definitely have to go to canada or other places because give them too much power they'll destroy give your husband all the power give your child all the power give anybody none of us can handle that power but there is somebody who is the creator 
there's somebody who this power doesn't go into his head he's not corrupt he doesn't have beginning he doesn't have the end and he's not just God over the planet distant like Thanos he just simply snaps his fingers and he got his rings by crushing everybody's planet no he actually made everything he created everything and he wanted the humans to be part of his physical family I remember reading a book this week and I would recommend you it called Supernatural by Dr. Michael Heiser and he had this phrase there that ministered to me so well I even shouted before I went to sleep and my wife said hey what did you read I said no you have to read it yourself to discover the truth but then she bribed me into sharing that with her as well and this is the phrase that he said he said people say why can't God just remove evil just click delete trash empty the trash can start all over for God to remove evil he would have to remove two of his families his spiritual family because that's where the corruption started with the devil and he would have to remove his physical family that's where the corruption also started the earthly family Adam and Eve and also you and I included if he would remove both of those families that means that his plan to rule the planet and the universe through his family was a mistake and he doesn't make mistakes this might not satisfy your longing for that answer but God could remove it the only way he can remove it is to remove you remove me and remove the devil remove everybody but God that would mean that God made a mistake by having this plan of involving us in reaching and spreading his message on the earth and God does not make mistakes I want to encourage you today that the Lord our God wants to be our Lord amen the second thing that I want to highlight and that is today the enemy will not maybe remove the Lord out of God he will settle for empty confession without full practice of Lordship Jesus said that in Matthew 7 21 not everyone who say Lord Lord Luke chapter 6 verse 46 it says why do you call me Lord Lord but you don't do what I tell you today the devil is okay with you calling God Lord as long as it's not backed up with your life as long as just an empty word I don't know if you ever seen those um, people who put an apple and attach it to their PC computer and make it an apple computer ever seen it you ever seen somebody cut out a Mercedes emblem and stick it on the Toyota? You never seen it? I, I've, I've seen it. I've seen somebody print a Starbucks cup and uh, tape it with the tape on their cup. I've seen somebody take a Rolex, cut out just a piece, a piece, piece of um, a printed Rolex and, and stick it, just tape it on their, on their watch. Now, if you see those things, they're funny. But you know that that's not real. So this is what Jesus is addressing in the New Testament. He's saying that not everyone who prints Lord, Lord and sticks it on whatever they're doing now is the one that's actually obeying the will of my Father. Jesus is saying is this just a fake Lordship meaning you can profess it without possessing it you can profess it without surrendering and so the dilemma that happens in the generation today is people who claim the Lordship of Jesus Christ but they don't live their lives surrendered they barely go to church they barely open the Bible they don't give they don't serve they don't participate in anything and they simply say Lord Lord and some of them they can even have some spiritual gifts like Bible says this the Bible says this that some of them can prophesy they can heal the sick but my friend the question is not can you prophesy the question is not can you heal the sick the question is not even do you know the Christian lingo the question is can you talk to Christianese the question is not that the question is that have you been doing the will of your father to do his will means you have to yield your own I'm not talking about agreeing with God on the things you agree with God like bless me heal me deliver me I'm talking about when your wills clash you say Lord not my will but your will be done that is living under the Lordship of Jesus Christ that is living under the Lordship of Jesus Christ come on touch your neighbors to keep the Lord in God Jesus cannot be my Savior if He is not my Lord. The Bible says that in Acts chapter 16 verse 31, it says the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is required for salvation. Have you noticed in the Lord Jesus Christ? 
not in Jesus Christ but in the Lord Jesus Christ salvation has become come to the front pray a prayer mean it from the bottom of the heart and please understand we'll do that again today but I want to warn every person who thinks that you can just print a sticker pray a prayer without death to your will I'm not talking about death to your sin I'm not talking about death to your problems I'm not talking about death to your heartbreak I'm talking about death to your will to do his will you have to give up yours Jesus is not wanting to be nobody's fire insurance he says I am either Lord of all or I am not at all he wants to be your Lord and only one worthy to be qualified of that title Jesus has to be Lord if he wants to be if you want to make him your savior that's what the Bible says that means I can't accept him as savior and reject him as Lord there's no such a thing you take him as your savior and you take him as your Lord Christianity is very dangerous in the sense that you lose your life to get his you give your life to him and you acknowledge what does that mean when he is your Lord it means three things I acknowledge his ownership somebody say ownership that means I belong to him I'm not like a property to the Lord but I am his priceless possession I'm not a property God doesn't play with me like with a napkin use me and throw me out no God treats me like a price like a like a peril of a great price I, I'm precious to him but nevertheless I am his possession that means that you are owned by him you're already owned by him but you choose to acknowledge that number two having the lordship of God means absolute surrender absolute surrender we don't like things that we own that don't listen to us like even if you have a pet and that pet don't listen to you you're like man I bought you I gave you a medical shot I put a chip inside of you I am your Lord I feed you you wouldn't even know where to get food without me I care for you you little four-legged animal and you're giving me an attitude and I can sell you as fast as I bought you we don't like it now of course some of those things they need to be trained but I want to tell you something the Lord wants to have absolute surrender when you buy a car and your car has a mind of its own you're gonna get rid of that car very soon you will go to a mechanic you will sell it on Copart or something but you're gonna be like I am not gonna drive something that does not listen to me and want to drive itself I mentioned the story one time when I bought this Audi off of Craigslist in Portland very bad decision and uh, this Russian guy that was selling me he wasn't even there his wife sold it to me and uh, I, I started I didn't even know how to start Audi because you don't start it like this you have to push the key in so I had to YouTube on how to start an Audi because I've never had an Audi and so it was an older uh, off of the auction and so I pushed it in and it made it <laughs> so I thought it was turbo his wife told me like well that's turbo and so um, okay sounds good I've never had a turbo so I have a car with the turbo and Audi and I was driving one time one time after morning prayer going to the gold's gym and right here on the on the churn the car decided to accelerate when I was pressing brakes like a mind of its own that turbo turned on it starts going so fast on the red light thankfully I pulled the e-brakes pulled the key out came to a stop and I took it to a mechanic literally the same day and I said listen you need to fix this why this thing doesn't listen to its owner it does not have absolute surrender therefore I can't have it use it until it learns there's only one boss and it's not it it's me now I understand it's a car we're not a car we're humans we're made in the image and likeness of God but when you acknowledge his lordship you want to be used of him you have to be absolutely surrendered God won't use you like you use the car but he wants to know you're fully surrendered the third meaning of surrender of lordship is willingness to serve is you are willing to serve his purposes and you're willing to serve his goals and his agenda there's a story I've shared it with our tribe on Monday that it's been my verse 
for this season of my life I want to read it with you right now if you have your Bible let's go to 2nd Samuel chapter 15 and verse 25 and 26 that's the, the other portion of the Bible that I'm going to read today 2nd Samuel chapter 15 25 and 26 this comes when David is out of Israel his son Absalom went bananas and um, decided to declare himself to be a king a king he had a lot of good people around him so he felt like that validates him to be a king his dad is too old he doesn't know what he's doing and so he's moving to Jerusalem to take over the throne David instead of creating a fight he decides to step back and walk away from the throne verse 25 then king said to Zadok carry the ark of God back into the city if I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, I want you to notice how David sees God, the Lord. In fact, it's later on, he gives a messianic prophecy. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, he's talking about two Lords. He says, the Lord said to my Lord, and Jesus used that prophecy to confuse the Pharisees. And he said, who was David talking about? He said, whose Lord was he talking to when he was talking about his Lord? And he totally messed up the Pharisees because it simply meant that God had a son and it simply meant that there is you know God the Father and there is God the Son. But I want you to notice the relationship David has with God. He says, if I find the favor in the eyes of the Lord, he's not just his God. To David, yes I'm a king, yes I call the shots, yes I'm the guy in charge, but listen I have a God who is my Lord. He says, if I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and show me both it and his dwelling place. Verse 26. This is the key verse. If he says thus, I have no delight in him. Here I am. Let him do to me as seems good to him. Mic drop right there. Are you kidding me? Do you remember his predecessor when God came to Saul and said, Saul, you're fired. You've been disobedient to me. And Saul got so addicted to the throne. He got so addicted to the privileges that came with the throne. He loved his entourage. He loved that fact that he had the palace. He had everybody obeying him. But God's like, Saul, you, you, you're done here. And Saul said, no, I'm going to hold on to this. In here we see David is walking out from the throne. God is not telling David to leave the throne. David is seeing a problem. His son is about to make a big mess. A lot of blood will be spilled. He's like, I don't want this to happen. And what David does is that David walks away from the throne. He meets Zadok and Zadok's like, we got the ark of God, man. Let's go, David, like the old times. Me, ark, and then we're just going to go fight it and Absalom's going to die. And David says, take the ark back inside. It belongs in Jerusalem. And he says, if God... If I find favor in the eyes of God, he says, I'll be back. He'll show me the ark. He'll show me his dwelling place. Everything will be fine. And then David throws this thing. He says, if God, for some reason, unknown to me, says, I no longer delight in David. I don't find pleasure in him. Honestly, I don't like him. David says, this is what I'm going to do. I don't know if he will say that or not. But in case he does, I want you to Zadok to know my response. I won't go crazy. I won't fight for the throne. I will say this, here I am. Do to me what seems good to you. Put me back in the shepherd's field. Do whatever you want with me. Why? Because you're my Lord. I am their king, but you are my Lord. God never said, I have no delight in David. God never said you should not be a king but David's response was this Lord here I am Isaiah said here I am send me God comes to Ananias and says go to see Saul and, and Ananias says here I am Lord I'm going to do what you want me to do God comes to Abraham and says Abraham sacrifice your son and Abraham said here I am Lord God comes to Jacob and he says here I am Lord and God comes to David in a premeditated version not physically but David is already assuming in case he comes and he said David you are fired David you've done too much bad David you lost your job as a king David I have no delight in you and David is already have a pre-made answer here I am do to me what seems good to you my friend I want to challenge you to live with this position in your heart here I am do to me what seems good to you I know we know God's will to heal but if something does not happen as you want it, here I am. Do good to me as it seems good to you. 
I know that we know God's promise to deliver but I want you to have a posture in your heart here I am do to me as it seems good to you I know it's God's will for you to get married but here I am do to me as it seems good to you it is God's will to prosper you but have this posture here I am do to me as it seems good to you I know God says he will give you children and your children will possess the gates of your enemies but you have to have a posture here I am do to me as it seems good to you I know that God has given you a prophetic word and a prophetic dream of your future but if things take a route that is different than what you expected here I am do to me what it seems good to you I know God calls you into ministry but God wants you to have a posture here I am do to me as it seems good to you do to me as it seems good to you. Do to me as it seems good to you. Lord, I surrender to you. Lord, I yield my ministry to you. Lord, I yield my children to you. Lord, I yield my life to you. Lord, I lead, lead my body to you. Lord, do to me what seems good to you. If you want to take me through the fire, I am yours. If you want to take me to the top, I am yours. If you want to show in me an example of suffering, Lord, do to me as it seems good to you now my will be done but your will be done God eventually brought David back to the throne God eventually established David's throne but God wants you to have this posture in your heart here I am do to me what seems good to you this does not mean that you don't fight for what God has given to you. This does not mean that you don't fight for your healing. This does not mean that you don't fight for your family. It just means you have a posture in your heart between you and God. God, I belong to you. God, you're my owner. God, you are my owner. I belong to you. I give you absolute surrender. God, do to me what seems good to you. We want our ministry to grow and touch the world. But what if it doesn't happen how I expected my response? Here I am. Do to me as it seems good to you. I remember I even came to Pastor Eli and said, Eli, I want you to lead the church. I want to serve you. He's like, no. My response now to, to the things of ministry when it comes to leading the church, preaching is, Lord, here I am. Do to me what seems good to you. And if God, if you don't fight pleasure and you want me to step down and do something else, God, I will say, here I am. Do to me as it seems good to you. I'm not saying I achieved the posture of David, but I want to be like David in this regard. When God gave David a promise that he will be a king, David had so many opportunities to cut, take the shortcut, but he didn't do it. Why? Because his posture is God. Here I am. Do to me as it seems good to you. When God says, I'll give you an enemy, you can do whatever you want with it. And then that enemy was Saul. He went to urinate in the cave. And one of the brothers of David reminded David and said, remember the promise that Samuel or other prophets gave you that God will finally make the enemy, put him into your hands and you can do to him whatever you want. And you, you can just take him out right now and then you'll become a king. All the promises will come true. God gave you the green light and David just cut the robe of Saul. And even then he felt bad because David wouldn't take a shortcut. To David, it wasn't about the throne. It wasn't about the promise. To David, it was not about, it was about making sure his Lord is pleased with his servant make sure that his lord now make sure my stock portfolio is good now make sure my reputation is doing good now make sure everybody talks good about me now make sure my following is good now make sure i have the best army now make sure that i have the best position and the best perks now make sure of them i make sure my lord is pleased with his servant here i am do to me what seems good to you pray that prayer it's a scary prayer because you're surrendering your rights but I want to tell you something God is not a monster he's not a Pharaoh he's not a pilot he's not a Herod he's not a Hitler he doesn't take advantage of people this doesn't mean you surrender to your sickness this doesn't mean you surrender to a special needs child or you, you, you surrender to the situation that you can't control this simply means you take everything that you're going through and you surrender it to the sovereignty of your Lord it doesn't mean you don't know whether he wants to heal you or not you do know he wants to heal you because he made it clear but sometimes there are situations like Absalom sometimes there is situation like happening in your life you have no explanation for what do you do you posture your heart and you say here I am do to me what seems good to you 
brothers and sisters who are going in the 1040 window right now some of them who are watching and who are honestly losing their job some of them who are losing their relationships some of them who will be shipped to different camps and prisons because of their faith in Christ yes God promises to rescue them but some of them will die because Paul says whether we live or die we to the Lord whether we live or we die we belong to the Lord we are his subjects he has ownership of us he has us we belong to him in absolute surrender whether it's through death or whether it's through life we belong to God here I am do to me as it seems good to you whether it's starting three services, whether it's generously giving, whether it's serving, whether it's living with passion for God. Here I am. Do to me as it seems good to you. If a snake comes to your garden and said, has God said, you said, devil, let me stop you there. He is your God, but he is my Lord. And he said, and it settles it, and I believe him. And therefore, devil, get out of my garden. Devil, get out of my family. Get out of my situation. Why? Because he is your God, but he is my Lord God. He is my Savior. <laughs> Hallelujah. You might be going through today what lepers were going through. And I love what they said when they met Jesus. They said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on water. Yes, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Blind, uh, the father with the special needs child and, and also demonized child. He says, Lord, have mercy on my son. Blind man said, Lord, let our eyes be opened. Jesus says go find a donkey and when they say what are you doing he says Lord the Lord needs them Matthew 22 37 love the Lord your God mm. pray to the Lord of the harvest the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath the most beautiful part about his Lordship is when you submit to it he takes not only ownership he always is responsible for what he owns and then you have not only the right, the privilege, Lord, heal me. Why? I'm your property. I'm your possession. My body is yours. My life is yours. Lord God, heal me. That means I acknowledge your Lordship. I acknowledge your sovereignty. I acknowledge your power over my life. Do to me what seems good to you to overcome temptation never let the devil take you out of the realm umbrella and protection of the Lord God I want you to rise to your feet before we give a call to salvation maybe you found yourself today broken maybe you found yourself today shattered perhaps you are sick battling with illness in your body we're gonna approach his throne in just a moment and we're gonna believe for healing we're going to believe that the Lord will meet you at the point of your need. But I want you, before we do that, I want you to take a moment and just surrender to His Lordship right now. I want you to put the Lord back in God. I want you to say, Lord God, I worship you. Lord God, I praise you. I yield to you absolute surrender. And this doesn't mean that you will always get it right. But you will practice surrender. You will not practice lawlessness. You will not practice sinfulness. You will practice Lordship. You will get better. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Come on, from the back to the front. When police officer arrests you, you raise your hands. That simply means that I, I'm not going to fight back. I am, I am vulnerable. I submit myself to your rulership and I submit yourself to your authority. When we raise our hands in church, we're saying to God, I submit myself to your Lordship. This is not just a religious act. It's an act of surrender. It's an act of just, I, Lord, you're my owner. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. I worship you. If we, if we can do that song again, the, the, fill me with the fresh oil. Lord we surrender to you we praise you Lord we honor you we exalt you we lift you up today 
Come on, just lift up your voice right now. Say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship. Come on, let, the, let your voice be heard on high. We, we all believe, most of us are believers here. So just open up your lips and begin to say, Lord, I exalt you. Lord, I surrender my will. Lord, I surrender my desires. Lord, I surrender my past. Lord, I surrender to you. Lord, I acknowledge I am not my own. I don't belong to me. I belong to you. I exalt you right now. I lift you up. My God, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, I come to you for healing I'm my Lord I come to you for protection whatever you're battling with right now I want you to in your garden or maybe in your valley or in your situation begin to cry out to your Lord begin to cry out to your God to the sovereign God maker of heaven and the earth and the one who owns and created you we praise you Lord we praise you Father we exalt you Lord we worship you we worship you we worship you we worship you, we worship you. everyone on live stream right now just lift up those hands those of you on zoom just begin to welcome the lord his presence will saturate your room his anointing will fill your room every devil cannot stand in this why because he, he cannot acknowledge god as his lord but God has lifted the name of Jesus above every name. That every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. When you say Lord, demons tremble. When you say Lord, demons tremble. When you say Lord, sickness has to go. When you say Lord, depression has to bow. When you say Lord, fear has to go. Yes. Yes. We praise the Lord. Every wall has to be brought down. Every mountain to be lifted down. Yes. See, come on, say your power flow until the whole world knows my Jesus. I want Lord. more, I want more, I want more of your fresh oil. Give me more, you give more of your power. I long to see your power flow until the whole world knows my Jesus is Lord. Fill my lap with Holy Spirit, oil. Fill my lap with Holy Spirit, oil. So that I can testify of you, be a witness of Jesus Christ. Fill my lamp with Holy Spirit. Fill my lamp with Holy Spirit. So that I, so that I can testify of you. Be a Come on, say. I want more. I want more of your fresh oil. Give me what you give more of your power. I long to see your power flow. Till the whole world knows my Jesus is Lord. I want more, I want more of your fresh oil. You give more, you give more of your power. I love to see your power flow. Until the whole world knows my Jesus is Lord. I want more, I want more of your fresh oil. You give more, you give more of your power. I love to see. Your power flow until the whole world knows my Jesus. I want more, I want more, I want more of your fresh oil. You give more, you give more of your power. I long to see your power flow until the whole world knows my Jesus is Lord. Fill my lap with Holy Spirit oil. Fill my lap with Holy Spirit oil so that I can testify of you. Fill my lap with Holy Spirit oil, fill my lap with Holy Spirit oil, so that I can testify of you. 
be with yes, us, Lord. Jesus Christ. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. I surrender to your Lordship. I surrender to your Lordship. Every part of my life. Every part of my life. May it bring you glory. May it bring you glory. Do to me. Do to me. What seems good to you. What seems good to you. May my life. May my life. Be an anthem of your name. Be an anthem of your name. I want you to close your eyes and bow your head. If you are sick in this place. If you're battling with an illness, perhaps it's a mental problem or a physical illness. I want you to place your hand upon the part of the body where there is pain. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord over Sabbath. He is Lord over every flesh. The keys of life, the keys of death, all belongs to Him. Those of you watching us on live stream, if you are battling, if there is pain in your body, Jesus is about to walk into that room. The Lord of glory is about to walk into your hospital room. The Lord of glory is about to walk into your bedroom, into your living room. And the same Lord who healed the lepers and the blind men, that helped that poor woman whose daughter was demonized severely, this Lord is going to walk in right now into your room. I want you to get ready. In just a moment from now, His presence will be real and manifest. Holy Spirit, we ask You right now that Your glory will saturate this room. We ask You that Your glory will saturate every person that is battling right now, that is seeking healing. Manifest Your glory. In the name of Jesus, I come against every infirmity right now. I command that sickness to go in Jesus' name. I command that sickness like the walls of Jericho to fall right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God consume anything that is not of God. Let the fire of God consume anything that is not of Jesus. Every blindness go in Jesus' name. Every infection in the body in the name of Jesus Christ. Every tumor and cyst, every cancerous cell, in Jesus' mighty name. Every ulcer, go in Jesus' mighty name. I command that pain in that body right now, that sharp pain, that small pain due to an accident, due to some kind of a generational curse, to go in Jesus' name. I break every generational curse right now. Let it shatter like a glass in a window. Let it break right now and fall into pieces. In Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Right now we're going to pray. Father, we ask, Lord, every the endocrine system, Lord, we ask for total healing, Father. We ask right now, Lord, every single respiratory issue. Lord, we ask, Lord, right now, place your hand in the area that has pain, and we're going to ask the Lord right now to break and shatter every single thing. Father, we ask you, Lord, for every single part of our lives, our health, Lord, any bone issue, bone marrow issue Lord we ask you Lord to heal it in Jesus name Lord any asthma Lord any Alzheimer father we ask you Lord to break it in Jesus name Lord every cell regenerative issue Lord we ask you to break it Lord every single endocrine system issue Lord we ask you to break it Lord the nervous system the respiratory system father we ask you to break it in Jesus name Lord healing Lord total healing in Jesus name Right now we declare, we decree, we break down every wall. 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 We cast down and cast out every single spirit against these in Jesus' name. We come against every fear, every phobia, chronic anxiety in the name of Jesus. We command it to bow its knee to the name of Jesus right now. You got no choice. You got to bow your knee to the name of Jesus right now. I command that spirit of fear, any demonic entity behind that anxiety in Jesus' name. I cripple your ability to operate. 
because the Lord is in this room and his name is Jesus and you need to bow right now in Jesus name I speak healing to those battling with anxiety I speak healing to those battling with phobias I speak healing to those that are battling right now with multiple personality disorder PTSD in the name of Jesus I speak healing right now to missing chemicals in your brain I speak healing right now to brain damage any kind of result because of concussion in the name of Jesus be healed every swollen in your brain I speak life right now the life of Jesus because he is the Lord and his word has power in the realm of the spirit and that word bring healing to your mind right now in Jesus name in the name of Jesus father touch your people Holy Ghost touch your people right now let strength come in places of weaknesses let things that are broken that it did not heal properly let them be healed right now in Jesus mighty name let unusual miracles happen right now let what is impossible happen right now because to you impossible is simply impossible make it possible right now for them the way you did it for the leper the way you did it for the blind man the way you did it for the father with the son who was demonized heal people right now father Jesus manifest your lordship in this place in Jesus name every head bowed and every eye closed if you're in this room today and you have not yet surrendered to Jesus as your Lord and your Savior it's not enough to know that you're a sinner that needs salvation you also know that you're a selfish person who can't rule your life on your own you need somebody to help you Jesus doesn't want to be your spiritual guide or little white angel on the side he wants to be and he's the only one qualified to be your Lord your God and your Lord when I count to three if you're in this room and you have not yet made a decision to give your life but you want to I'm gonna ask you to just raise your hand and this will be your way of saying I need to get saved I need to ask Jesus I need to give my life to Jesus today when, you, when I count to three those of you on live stream on Facebook or on YouTube if you need to get right with God and there's only one way to do that is you acknowledge his lordship you acknowledge the only way to God is Jesus Christ and you come to him and surrender you and I are sinners we're rebels but he gave a way for us to be reconciled to him and to be part of his human family one two three just raise that hand high if you saying, I would like to get saved today I would like to give my life to Jesus thank you young man anybody else is saying hey today is my day I want to reconnect I want to yield I want to give my life to the Lord in Jesus name we thank you Lord we praise you Father we exalt you Lord if you raised your hand or you wanted to raise your hand I'm gonna ask you to do something bold right now I'm gonna ask you to come come right here to the front I want to pray with you just come just come yeah don't, don't, don't worry you can come the way you are and stuff so just come we're gonna pray and then those people that are online you're watching us online as we're gonna pray with this young man and anybody else who's coming right now you pray with us as well and remember it's not the prayer it's the heart posture you are saying, Lord I surrender Lord forgive me of all my sin and Lord become my Lord anybody else who's saying hey today I need to make that decision anybody else just come just come amen let's pray this prayer with me bro okay I want you to say and those of you with me I want you to say Lord Jesus Jesus I submit to you I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me. Please forgive me of everything I've done. Of everything that I've done. I believe. I believe you are the Son of God. You are the Son of who God who died on a cross. Who died on the cross for someone like me. For someone like from this day forward. From this day forward. I yield my will to you. I yield my will to you. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Make me yours forever. Make me yours forever. In Jesus name. In Jesus. Name. Amen. 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 God bless you, bro. Our guy's going to just talk to you for a little bit and pray for you, okay? For those of you that are watching us on live stream, go to hungrygen.com forward slash VIP and let us know that you prayed that prayer. One of our team members will get hold of you today. In Jesus' mighty name.